time. You, I'm sure you know today's guest because she's a favorite and she comes back as often as she's available and you always request her back because she's amazing and she has a wonderful book and I meant to grab it before I sat down, but I'm sure she can show you to you. It's called Straight Up Food and it's got beautiful pictures with every recipe and it lays flat, which is such an awesome thing. And today she's going to be demonstrating a yellow lentil and butternut soup and an herb roasted potatoes with a homemade ketchup. Please welcome back to the show, my friend, Kathy Fisher. How's, how are you doing, Kathy? Hi, AJ. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your show again. And yeah, here's my book, Straight Up Food. Um, if you want to get a copy, it's on Amazon. It's on my website by the same name, straightupfood.com. And I know a lot of you probably already have the book. So thank you very much for picking it up. Um, if you don't have the book, just know that it lays flat, which is nice. It's got lots of pictures and, um, and this has been out almost four years now. I can't believe that. Um, there are newer recipes that have come out since the book. So check out my website as well, straightupfood.com. Um, all right. And I just wanted to tell AJ that I'm wearing my puppy print apron today in her honor. Uh, I don't know. You kitty prints or puppy prints, but um, some kind of prints on there. Um, well, so, you, you're like Dr. Lyle. You love kitty cats. I love kitty cats. I know. And whenever you find like a, a, a print, of the paw print, it's usually a dog print, not a cat print. Um, but they're, they're very similar. So today we're going to make three recipes. I always like to pack a lot in here. And we're going to make the yellow split pea and butternut soup, as AJ said, the roasted potatoes and the ketchup. And for those of you who've never seen me before or heard of me, I'll just tell you uh, real quick um, what my story is in a nutshell. I live in Sonoma County, California, and I teach at True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, as well as the Dr. McDougall program in Santa Rosa. And I've been doing that for over 10 years now and uh, teaching and teaching live though is a new thing for me since I think May. And um, I've been going live on my Facebook channel or page um, every Tuesday. And then starting in October, I'll be doing first and third Tuesdays. So uh, you can check me out there. And if you want to watch my videos on replay, they are on YouTube. Just search uh, Straight Up Food. Okay. Um, and I've been eating plant-based for about 20, over, about 20 years. AJ, how long have you been eating plant-based? 43 years. 43 years. That is amazing. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's get started. I've got lots of things prepared and kind of ready to go. And I'll do a few things as we go along. If you guys have any questions, just post them in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them. So the first thing we're going to do is get the soup going again. Now I've already started the soup because it has these, I don't know if you can see this, it's got yellow um, split peas and they take a little while to cook. These took about 40 minutes to cook. So I already did step one in the recipe, which is to combine seven cups of water with three cups of yellow split peas, which are right here. They, if you've never had yellow split peas, they do exist, not just the green ones. And they're usually kind of the half pea and they're dried. If you only had green peas, you could use those too, but the yellow is nice. It goes with the butternut squash. So we're going to use the yellow. So seven cups of water, three cups of yellow split peas that I cooked and simmered here for 40 minutes with the cover on. And so that's where we are picking up with step two. So I'm going to show you the butternut squash. Let me move this. Uh, Kathy, Pam says, are yellow split peas and lentils the same thing? No, no, they're different. Um, I don't know how to explain they're different. They are just different. Just like a green split pea is different from a, a lentil. Uh, lentils are a little smaller. And I think, I mean, they're all legumes, but peas are different than lentils. I don't know the details beyond that, but you could probably also use lentils in a pinch You'd have to adjust the cooking time if they were the, the red yellow lentils because those don't take as long as these yellow split peas. If you're using the brownish green lentils, then they could probably be substituted um, for the yellow split peas. 
And here is the butternut squash. I've already started most of it. We want to get six cups. And I'm going to refer to my recipe just so I don't lead you astray. So six cups of butternut squash. And this is nearly six cups. But I wanted to show you. And I'm going to turn this on just to get it going here. Because we are going to keep cooking it. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add some water. I don't know if you can see this. I did tilt my camera down a little bit, but I don't know if you can see inside the pot there, but there is some liquid floating in there, but I'm going to add one more cup of water per the recipe for the second part of cooking. Kathy, do you ever cook in your instant pot? I do. Oh yeah, and I, I thought, oh, someone's probably gonna ask me how to do this in an instant pot and I was gonna look and I forgot. Um, and I don't remember if I have the instructions for the instant pot on the recipe on the website. I kind of don't think I do. I use my instant pot to make beans or whole potatoes. I don't use it to do stuff like this. I don't know why, maybe because when I'm creating recipes I know everybody has a stove top, but probably not an instant pot. Um, so I don't use it as much as AJ, my instant pot, but I do like it. Okay. Jan wants to know when your next book is coming out. Is it straighter up food? <laughs> straighter up food. I don't know the exact when of when it's coming out. Um, writing a book takes so long and I just have to buckle down and and really put nose to the grindstone. But yeah, it's been four years since the first book. It's time. And I have an outline. I kind of, you know, I have it, the structure there. I just need to start chipping away at it. So I'm not sure. All right. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about how I cut these little beautiful squares here for the butternut soup. Um, and I should have bought another butternut squash so I could have a whole one to show you. But I'm hoping. You guys know what a butternut squash looks like. This is kind of the end of it. Uh, you can always Google it to see. But I just wanted to show you, I did, you know how it's like a bulb and then it gets skinny on one end. So this is mostly the skinny end, which doesn't have any of the seeds in it, but you do have to get into the seed part. And what I do is I don't even dig it out. I don't dig those seeds out because it's a pain in the booty. So what I do is just um, cut it. And I do use my eight inch chef's knife for this as opposed to my slightly smaller knife because this gives me a little bit more power. It's a little bit longer um, when I'm cutting something big like butternut squash. So once you get your little pieces like this, why is my cutting board on a wobbling? Okay. And I did already peel it as well. I peeled the outside and I used my Y peeler, which is especially good with something like butternut squash, because you really want to, you want to hold it on your cutting board and just go this way and use those biceps. The one, the potato peelers that are straight, I don't like as well, especially for something like butternut squash, where you have to really put some muscle into it. So I did already peel this. And then this is what I do. I just kind of go around and cut. And then I cut this little interior wall off just because I'm a little perfectionist and I don't want that in there. And then you don't have to scoop it out with a spoon or anything. You just have to cut it off. All right. Now, if you didn't have a butternut squash, you could probably use another type of winter squash too, if you like. If you followed me, you know I love options. I don't like doing the same thing twice. Um, Okay, so I'm not going to continue with this because I have enough, but I just wanted to show you um, how I did that. I'll keep clean as we go here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add, maybe I'll hold off one second and I'll add the other things in first before the butternut squash, like the dried herbs and spices so they get mixed in thoroughly. All right, so now we added the one cup water we're going to add some um, spices. And let me remind myself here. We are going to do one and a half tablespoons dried Italian seasoning. This is just, you know, basil, oregano, thyme, 
stuff like that. Then we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of paprika. If you do like a little smoky flavor in your soup, you can add a little uh, part of that as a smoky paprika. That's up to you. I didn't do that today. One and a quarter, if I can see that correctly, one and a quarter teaspoon granulated garlic. I have these all pre-measured out. I like granulated because it tends to disperse a little easier when you add it to soups and stews instead of the powder, which tends to clump. But if you only have powder, you can use that too. Kathy, Randy wants to know if you save the seeds from the butternut squash. If you can, or if I do? If you do. No. I do not, but they're probably edible and you could probably toast them up like pumpkin seeds if you want. I just buy the butternut squash already cubed. Yes, and I was gonna say that. Whenever I go to the produce section, I always see these things of pre-cut butternut squash, which you can totally do. All right, then we're gonna put in a little bit of coriander, one teaspoon. And last, we're gonna put in a half to one teaspoon red pepper flakes. These are spicy, so if you like spicy food, you can add zero of that. You can add a half teaspoon, which I did, or you can add more if you know you like things really spicy. All righty, and then I think the last thing is the butternut squash. So this is boiling and that is good. That is very pretty. Oh, and I forgot my celery and my onion. So this is just one yellow onion chopped. If you only had a white onion, you could use that. A red one would probably do fine too, but I usually use yellow. And then two ribs of celery. And again, if you are a person who does not do onions, leave it out. It's still gonna taste great. It's still gonna work. This makes quite a bit. My feeling is if you're gonna make a soup or a stew, make a lot. So you can eat some for the next day or and two and three, you can freeze some. All right, that looks so good. All right, you guys, I think I got everything in there. So I did have those uh, peas pre-cooked and the butternut squash pre-chopped, but otherwise it's just pretty, pretty easy. And this is it, we're just gonna cook this. Let me double check what I have written here because I do forget. Um, we're just gonna cook this for 15 to 20 minutes with the cover on until the peas are nice and mushy and that squash is nice and tender. And then if it gets too thick while it's cooking, feel free to add a little bit of water in there. And I also like to stir it one or two times during this portion of cooking because I don't know, like peas, they kind of like rice, they kind of stick to the bottom. So um, we want to just give it a little stir. So AJ, can, you're, can you see in the pot at all or no? I, I can. So I would imagine the viewers can. I, I can see in the pot. Have you actually done this one yourself in the instant pot yet? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't think so. If it's not on my website, if it's not, I don't think so. I've done other things, but I haven't done this one. Would you throw everything in at once, you think? Um, it depends on how long peas take to cook in the Instant Pot. I think it would be fine. You know, the onions and the celery would get a little overcooked, but I think the squash would be fine. You could even cut the chunks bigger. Um, and yeah, there, there must be a way. I just don't like um, starting something in the Instant Pot and then stopping and have to take it off pressure and put stuff in. Do you do that a lot, AJ, or? No, I just, I'm too lazy. If it doesn't work throwing it all in, I'm not gonna make it. Right. <laughs> you have to kind of just go with whatever ingredient will take the longest. In this case, it would be the, the lentils or the peas. Yeah, and if you wanted to, even though it's kind of, def uh, it kind of defies the purpose of using the Instant Pot. You could pre-cook the peas and then just add everything in. And, it, and at that point, it would probably only take five minutes or seven minutes or something. Oh, this is so pretty and it already smells so good. All right, so let's put the lid on. 
And I'm using my five and a half quart La Creuset little Dutch oven here. And I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. These little portable stoves cook like crazy, crazy hot. And I'll leave that there. All right, so we're gonna check in with this a little bit later and then we'll finish it up. Uh, you can just eat it like, like it is once the uh, squash is tender or we can put the immersion blender in there and cream it up a little bit, which is what I'm planning to do. So let's move this off. All right, I was gonna move all this back there, but I think it's fine. We can just leave it there and uh, we'll check in on it later. I do have a, a, a regular split pea soup recipe as well. It's got yams in it. They're really good with that um, sweet yams in it. All right. So let's move on to the herb roasted potatoes. Okay. Get all my stuff out here. All right. So AJ, you probably make a similar thing as my herb roasted potatoes in your Breville. Absolutely. Do you have an air fryer, Kathy? I don't. What is wrong with me? I'm just behind the times. No, I just use my oven. Um, so anyway, uh, this is a super easy recipe and it's just spices and potatoes. So the potato I'm using today is just a, uh, a russet potato. You could use Yukon gold. It doesn't really matter. I do peel mine though. So I've already peeled and cooked these. This is two pounds of potatoes, white potatoes, and you could use sweet potatoes or other types of potatoes too. Um, so the trick with these is you just want to cook them like five or so minutes once they're coming up to boil. So two pounds of potatoes cut kind of in large chunks, put them in a soup pot and cover them with water, bring them to a boil, let them boil for about five minutes. And you do want to keep an eye on them and just poke them every so often with the tip of your knife or a fork um, because you do want them to be tender. Like this one is tender, but it's not falling apart. Once they're falling apart, it's, it's, it's tough. So it's better to have them slightly firm than too cooked. So these are all ready to go. I'm gonna put my, and I have my spices all measured out here, which I will read off to you. So two teaspoons dried Italian herb seasoning. I'm using that in all my recipes today. So two teaspoons. And this is a dried um, herb blend that I have in the house all the time. When I buy it, I buy big bags of it because I use so much of it. And I'm gonna be putting everything just into this little uh, plastic container. So once I have all the spices in there, I could just shake them up and they'll be nicely combined in here before I pour them on the potatoes. All right, so next we're gonna have one teaspoon of granulated onion. Oh, it's kind of hardened up there. I measured these out last night. All right, and we're gonna have a little bit of black pepper. Oh, and some smoked paprika. I missed that, one and a half teaspoons. A little bit of garlic, which is a half teaspoon. And then I like to put in a little black pepper. And again, if you're a person who loves things hot and spicy, you can add a little cayenne pepper to this. If you want more of a kick, I'm not gonna measure this, but about a quarter teaspoon, is that what it says? Yes, of black pepper. All right, so there is everything. And I'm just gonna put, I have a little container with a lid on it so you can give it a, a little bit of a shake. This is just kind of an optional step, but I like to do it. So everything's combined before I put it on the potatoes. All right. So now I'm just going to shake this mixture over the potatoes. Not all at once though. And then just toss it. Toss it. We're, the goal is to get most of the sides of all the potatoes covered in a little bit of this dried seasoning. 
And really you can add any kind of seasoning you want. If you wanted to make curry roasted potatoes or a Mexican roasted potatoes, feel free to experiment with the dried herbs and spices to your heart's desire. You can't really go wrong. Okay, so these are looking good. And then when I get these all coated, I'm going to put them onto a baking sheet with a silicone mat on it. If you don't have a silicone mat, you can use parchment paper on a baking sheet or in like a nine by 13 pan. Okay. Ooh, these look good already. Mm, so good. I just want to thank Brody Nolan for her generous super chat donation. Thank you so much. She said, thanks Chef AJ for going live every day. I appreciate the great information. And I'm going live again at five because you guys asked for Kathy Mosquito to come back who did a cooking demo because she's also a certified yoga teacher. So we'll be doing that live at 5 p.m. Pacific time, absolutely free. If you'd like to join in on the yoga. AJ, I do watch your shows. I exercise from 10.30 to 11.30. So I usually tune in around 11.30 and then I'll go back and watch the beginning later. But I just love them. I learned so much. Thank you. Did you see the one on sexual health the other day? That was an interesting show. No, sexual health. I'll have to watch that one. Um, okay. So here's my baking sheet uh, with a silicone mat. These are great to if you're making cookies or uh, roasting veggies or anything like that. Or you can use parchment paper if you want. All right. So these are all coated. We're just going to put them dump them all on the baking sheet. And this recipe isn't on the website, it's only in the cookbook. I had to put some in the cookbook that were only in the cookbook. It's so funny, I get comments from people who um, are disappointed that recipes from the website are in the cookbook. They wanted all new recipes. And then other people say, I love that all my favorite recipes from the website are in the cookbook. So. Everybody's different. <laughs> so I made sure to put some favorites in the cookbook as well as some that are just exclusive to the cookbook like this. Well, you know, I don't know if you know Jill Dalton who was on on Tuesday. She's from the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. Her cookbook is exactly every recipe that's on her website. Oh, yeah. I mean, why but, would you, yeah. But it has a photo and it has the link to the video. So I don't think people realize how long it takes to come up with recipes. Oh, and I'm a slow recipe creator. It, so, it, yeah. and the thing is, is most of us don't even cook with recipes. At least I don't. Do you, Kathy? I usually just make food for dinner. Yes, I'm a very repetitive eater, and I was just thinking that yesterday. How I'm either making potatoes with veggies, whatever I have in the house, whatever kind of potatoes or veggies, or I'm making like a Mexican um, salad or something like that. And I just love those things. And then every once in a while, I will do a recipe of my own, a soup or a stew or something. But yeah, I'm big on just throwing things together. And if you like to see things just thrown together, check out my Facebook page because I'm always posting pictures of my lunch and my dinner. And if I've just thrown it together, I'll say that. And then you can just get ideas because a lot of times we just need an idea to kind of grab onto. All right. So here we go. I've spaced these all out on the... Um, cookie sheet here and you want air between them so try to have them not touching each other um, don't those look good already so we're going to put these in the oven which is preheated to 425 which sounds really high but I find that you need it to be that high if you want those crispy edges Kathy there's a question Yep. from Richard. What is the best way to clean a Sulpat mat? Well, first thing is you want to keep it in the baking sheet. You don't want to take it out and then try to manage it because it's like an octopus, you know, so leave it in the sheet. And sometimes there does get like crusty, crusty stuff on there. Just, you know, use your scrubby sponge or let me grab this real quick. I have a brush that is super ugly, but I had a roommate like 15 years ago or something. And this was her brush and she left it here when she moved out. And I love this ugly brush. It's got really 
kind of hard, stiff bristles. But before I start with my sponge on something and I don't want like, you know, I don't want all that stuff getting in my sponge. I will use this thing. I should name this. I love this so much. And it's just good to get in the pot and it's at a great angle. I should find this or something similar and put it in my website store because I love it so much. Um, but I like this better than like a, um, what do you call it? A, what do you call those things that are metal sponges? Brillo pads? Yeah, like a Brillo pad. Um, this works really, really well. So for most, most everything. So that's what I do. I'll go over it with this and then maybe I'll go in with the sponge afterwards. But get a stiff brush like this and it's just plastic so it's not going to scratch anything. All right. So there are the roasted potatoes. Let me clean off my cutting board. And I already made some this morning so you could kind of see what they look like. And so I have more extra roasted potatoes. Um, but here they are. They look very similar as when they went in, but you want to make sure they get kind of brown um, on the sides. I peel mine, by the way. You don't have to peel yours if you don't want to. You just don't want to cook them so much where those peelings are going to come off because then they're just floating around. So I like to peel mine. So don't those look good? Mm -mm -mm. They look amazing. And you know, I had, I had the um, cover of this over the top. So they've kind of re-moisturized, but when they first came out, they were really uh, crunchy. And now they're, they're a little less crunchy because that moisture from cooking kind of softened everything up. But these are what they look like when they're done. And these cook in the oven. Let me set my timer for about 25 to 30 minutes because I know I will forget and burn them. Okay. And if when you take yours out, you notice they're not quite as crispy or brown as you want, just put them in for a little while longer. Or you could put the broiler on if you really want to crisp them up. Or you can get an air fryer. <laughs> get an air fryer. Yes. All right. Let me check on this soup. Gina wants to know what you do for exercise. You, you, oh. you, you foster kitties. That's a lot of exercise. I foster kitties maybe once or twice a year. So I don't always have kittens that I'm fostering. Um, and yeah, let me answer that. But I'm stirring this and it is kind of sticking on the bottom a little bit. So you do want to make sure that you stir it once or twice. Okay. And as I said, these pots, they really, I mean, these uh, portable stoves cook really hot and fast. What I do for exercise, you know, I've always been really active in my life. I was a dancer for many, many years, and that would keep me in really good shape. When I was a kid, I did ballet, so I love anything dancing and music. Um, but about almost two years ago, it, it kind of hit me that I needed to start taking a regular exercise class, something that I paid for, which reminds me of a favorite saying of mine is when you pay, you pay attention. And that really works for me. Since I was paying for that exercise class, I was gonna go. I couldn't just like shuffle it off. Um, so I started going to a bar class. We have a bar studio, B-A-R-R-E, here in um, Sonoma County where I live. So I started going to a bar studio twice a week. And that's just, if you're not familiar with bar, it's strengthening. It's not so much cardio, it's mostly strengthening. I just started to feel funny like my back started hurting and I just started feeling creaky when I get up in the morning and I just didn't like it and my back was hurting you know when you have pain that's pretty motivating so I signed up for bar and I was doing it twice a week and then I hike and I walk and stuff too but I wanted to be strong and and I'm also kind of on the I've always been just a skinny person like I'm trying to gain a little bit of weight. And I thought, well, if I exercise, I can get some, some tone, which I was thinking would look, look a little better. So um, I started doing it twice a week. And then when COVID and the stay at home was in place and that started, I started going three times a week because I was just home, you know, not doing a whole bunch. And so I've been going three times a week since like March or April or whenever all this started. And I noticed a difference. So if you're only exercising twice a week, go up to three times a week. It really makes a difference. And that's what my teacher said. She said, well, most people do three times a week. 
So if I go more than two days without doing something, I just feel it. And I guess that's part of getting older. You've got to kind of stay on top of that a little bit more. So I do bar, it's um, 50 minutes. And then I also take another 20 minutes to do stretching after that. And I never skip the stretching. The stretching is just as important to me. So that's what I do for exercise. And I, I do now want to try to incorporate a little more cardio, maybe on the off days. So I like exercising and there's always music going and I love music and, um, and I love feeling good. Oh my gosh, I love feeling good. So that's what I do for exercise. That's great. Uh, Frank says, how do you get the spices to stick to the potatoes and what is the cooking time? Someone else asked. Uh, the cooking time is 25 to 30 minutes. And if you want them even crispier, just pop them back in for another few minutes. Um, the spices stick because potatoes are just naturally wet. Those I cooked earlier that I just did in the white bowl. And so they've been kind of drying out out of the water for an hour and the spice is still stuck. So potatoes are just very wet naturally. So you don't need to put any oil or lime juice or lemon juice on them. I mean, maybe you could if you wanted to try for more flavor with the citrus juice, but uh, potatoes are just wet. You don't need anything in between the spices and the potato. I mean, maybe if you left the skins on, they wouldn't stick to this part where the peeling is as much as the other part. But yeah, there's not a problem with that. And then I always eat my roasted potatoes with ketchup, which I'm going to show you how to make now. So um, there's plenty of flavor there without adding salt, without adding oil. Very easy. All right. Have you, have you ever cooked them and then twice baked them? I like doing that. I've never done that with these, no. And that reminds me, someone may be asking or thinking, like, why do you have to pre-cook them? Because it would, when you pre-cook them, it just makes the inside of the potato really nice and soft. And then when you bake them afterwards, it makes the outside nice and crispy. So it's just really nice. You could probably skip the pre-cook part, but I'm wondering if the dried herbs and spices on the outside would get too cooked, too singed because we're leaving it in there longer to cook those potatoes. I don't know. There's so many different ways to do the same recipe or same thing in cooking. It's amazing. So sometimes I'll create a recipe and then later I'll go, oh, I could have done it that way. There's so many ways. So let's see, there's a comment from Stephanie who says, Kathy, I appreciate your YouTube channel where you show us some of your wonderful recipes. Will you have some coming up with a holiday type theme? Yes. So once the holidays um, get a little closer, I'll be doing more holiday themed recipes in my life. Yes. Cool. Uh, and, and there's a question about True North. Are they still doing cooking classes there? Nobody's doing live cooking classes at True North as far as I know. Once they once things kind of get back to normal, then I'll start uh, teaching there in person again. And maybe also keep doing online stuff because it's so nice and wonderful how we can reach hundreds of people, thousands of people on the, in the replays too, um, doing it online. So my ideal would do a little bit of, of each. But True North is up and running. People are going there. I think they have a waiting list. So um, and they've got their COVID protocols in place to keep everything safe. So yeah, it's still going. And I think some lectures are doing it in person, but uh, the cooking is kind of a different thing. You know, I don't know that people would want to eat those samples or they would feel safe with that. Uh, it's still kind of that in between time, but people are doing well at True North. And also they have a new camera set up in their dining room where whoever's teaching in there, it's broadcast to all the rooms. So if people don't want to actually come down to the dining room, they can still watch the lectures, which is wonderful. Okay. So now I'm going to work on the ketchup and I'm going to use my little TriBest personal blender for that. And here it is. This is called Try Best Personal Blender. It's on the store on my website at straightupfood.com if you want to check it out. I've been using this for years and I just love it. If you have another kind of small blender, like a Nutribullet or something, use that. And then if that ever breaks, you can try a Try Best. Um, the blade is on the end 
and they have different packages. You can get plastic that doesn't have BPA in it, which is nice. You can get glass. They have different types of um, blades. So this is just great for when you want to do a little bit of something and you don't want the, the big jar of the Vitamix, you know, or you just have a little bit of volume. Sometimes that Vitamix blade can't really grab everything because there's not enough there. So having a little blender in addition to your big one is, I think, a great idea. And then sometimes I just want to chop, uh, grind up some flax seeds or something. And there's also shorter cups that it comes with. And this is perfect for that. Or to make a little salad dressing. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is add some water. And I think we will, yeah, I'll go ahead and add the water. Three quarter cup water. If we need to add a little bit more later to thicken it up a bit, we can do that. But three quarter cup water. And what is the problem with traditional ketchup? It's loaded with salt and sugar. So this is an alternative that is not having any salt in it. And instead of sugar, I'm going to use half of an apple. And you can leave the skin on, but I like to peel mine. These are, whoops, apples, Gravenstein apples for my tree. Um, I'm using these up. And for the ketchup, for the ketchup, I do like to peel it. It just gives it a little bit more refined flavor. But if you don't want to peel yours, you don't have to. And any kind of apple can work. Okay. If you want a more tart ketchup, you can use a more tart apple. I think like a Granny Smith or something. If you want a sweeter apple, you I mean sweeter ketchup, you can use like a Fuji apple. All right, so once you get it peeled, just cut it in half. And this is gonna be blended, so we don't need to chop it into small pieces, but we do want some chunky big pieces. So just like a half, half of an apple. Okay. And then when you make this at home, you can kind of dial it in and add more or less. Uh, sometimes people say, um, I want mine sweeter. So add more apple. You can add a date if you want to. I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, half, I think it's half teaspoon. Um, the recipe says oregano, but you can use oregano or the dried Italian seasoning that I keep talking about. And then a quarter teaspoon of granulated or dried garlic, which has stuck to the bottom there, just for a little bit of flavor. And then the last thing is just some tomato paste. So this is tomato paste in a jar. It's by Bio, Bio Nature. No salt added right there at the bottom, no salt added. And let me stir this soup. I could just hear it going crazy right here. So I'm gonna give it a little stir. Ooh. How do you eat your soup, Kathy? I always eat my soup over rice. Oh. I just eat it plain, you know, and then if I have kind of the tail end of the soup, I will pour it over like a baked potato or something or a boiled or steamed potato. Ooh, this looks so good. All right. All right, so this is tomato paste in a jar. Some people don't like cans. So just know that there are jars out there. There are tubes of tomato paste. Always read your ingredient list just to make sure there's nothing weird in there because that reminds me right here, I have my example bad tomato paste that I like to talk about. You always wanna read the label, even if it's on something seemingly innocent as tomato paste. This one says tomato paste with Italian herbs and it has for ingredients, Roma tomato puree, uh, sea salt, dried onion, soybean oil, spices, Romano cheese made from cow's milk, cultured milk, salt, enzymes, citric acid, garlic powder, natural flavors. So there's a lot of stuff in there that if you're watching this show, you probably do not want to be eating. And there was no mention of Italian herbs. So they probably put that under the natural flavors category. And whenever I see natural flavors, I'm a little suspect. So just get the stuff that's pure tomatoes. What does this one say? Organic tomato paste, yeah. Nothing else in there, no salt, no nothing. 
So usually the can, the cans are six ounces. This is seven ounces. So I'm going to add most of this. I could just add it all. So what am I going to do with one ounce of tomato paste? You know what I could do? Put it in a little Ziploc bag, put it in my uh, freezer. And then if I'm just making something on the fly and I want a little flavor, I'll just throw it in. You can throw it right into your, your pan or your pot frozen and it'll, it'll uh, soften up real quick out of the freezer. That's what I do. I freeze it in a little thing and then use it to make ketchup and things like that. Yeah. All right. So those are all the ingredients, the water, the apple, the tomato paste, the dried green herbs, and the dried garlic. All right, so we got to turn this upside down. This is very low tech. You just line up the little notches there and kind of turn it to the side. Did I forget the vinegar? One tablespoon. I did. It's not funny. I just read down that list and totally glossed over the vinegar. So a little apple cider vinegar or other kind of vinegar that you like in there um, just to give it that tang. If you're a person that doesn't consume vinegar for any reason, just use lemon juice instead. Okay. Okay, we're going to take a look at it really thin today. I wonder why. I wonder if it's because I'm using this and usually I use uh, canned tomato paste and this was quite um, a little bit thinner than the canned stuff which is usually quite pasty. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add in some more apple and see if that see if that helps kind of make it a little thicker. And then I don't know if you could see this color from there, but it's kind of more of an orangey color. And after, after blending, the longer it sits, the more red it becomes because it gets oxidized by the air a little bit. Boy, I'm full up there. Okay. looks more like um, like sauce. <laughs> That's really interesting. I wonder why it's it's probably because of this and this is just a, a thinner consistency than regular tomato paste from a can. Um, let me taste it for you and I bet it would thicken up. So if you do use it from the jar or the tube, maybe put in half a cup of water and then add more as you need it. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. All right. So let me put this to the side. When I do use the canned tomato paste, it really does look like regular ketchup. And people are so happy usually that they can consume ketchup again because if they're trying to avoid salt for high blood pressure or whatever, they're just so happy that they have this condiment back. All right, so let's finish up this soup. Thomas Allen from California Balsamic said he got your cookbook after your last guest spot and love it. You know who he is, right? From California Balsamic. I sure do. Thank you, Thomas. That's how I make barbecue sauce. I just take his uh, it's smoked hickory and mix it with tomato paste, and I've got barbecue sauce. Ooh, that sounds wonderful. I do have a barbecue sauce recipe in the cookbook. The ketchup recipe is in the cookbook, too. 
And the, barbe uh, the barbecue sauce, I used some black beans to kind of deepen the color. And I forget what else I put in there, but it kind of starts as ketchup and then I add some black beans and I forget what else, but it's super good. So if you want barbecue sauce, check it out. Krista says, I freeze Kathy's ketchup recipe in an ice cube tray, tray and then store them in the freezer to use as needed. Yeah, and they free uh, the ketchup freezes really well. You don't even have to re-blend it afterwards. Okay, so I'm just poking the butternut squash. Uh, you guys can probably see this just to make sure it's nice and tender. And since I've been cooking the heck out of this, things are done in here. Things are done. Ooh. For a couple of minutes, thank goodness you're back. <laughs> oh, a couple of minutes? Well, not a couple of minutes, but it, for like a minute, right? Yeah, you were gone. Oh. I was very nervous. Yeah. Is that my fault or your fault or should I do anything? Well, I don't know if it's fault. I mean, it just sometimes it happens. But we, we, the last thing I remember saying is many people said, how long will the ketchup last in the fridge? And then you went away for just a little bit. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. I don't know how long it would last. I mean, I'd probably eat it up before one or two months. Yeah. It, but is she back now, Charles? Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Testing, no testing. Picture. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's weird, Kathy, is people are saying they can hear you, but they, there's no video that you're completely black. Oh, I see myself at the top of the Zoom thing. So yeah, that is weird. I don't yeah. know. I wonder if Let you should try logging it. You want to try coming back? You want to try getting out and coming back and I'll just entertain the troops? Um. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have her log out, guys, and I'll I'll pay I'll talk to you for a minute and tell you what's coming up on the show. So, and if you have any questions for me, you could do it. So, why don't you log out, Kathy? There she is. Okay, Charles, it's if there's this. Can I show you something? It's saying on my computer. Yeah. Does this have anything to do with this? Right here. I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you guys can hear and see me, I hope, right? So I'll just tell you who's on the show coming up. If you want to know for real, you can sign up to be on my mailing list. I will post a link to that. We, we are only sending an email out once a week about that now because people said we were sending to, oh, no video from either of us. Uh-oh. Well, that's funny. Okay, I just need to know if you guys can, okay, so Christopher says I can see Chef AJ. Can you see me, Charles? Uh, I'm just I can see where well, you're frozen. Since your bandwidth is low, so let's close all the other other videos you have open. Okay. Well, I don't really have videos open. Okay. AJ is free. This I'm really apologize. This hasn't happened before. So let's see what I can close. Oh boy. Sorry guys. I don't know what's going on. This is frustrating, isn't it? Let's see if Kathy comes back. Close up anything. I'm closing up everything that's. Uh, okay. Can you see me now? I can see you. Charles, can you see Kathy? Uh, let me get back there. It's not saying low bandwidth. Guys, um, Kathy's on and I'm on. Can you guys see both of us and hear both of us? Thank you for understanding. Yeah, video is back. Okay, so back. Okay. And is she's back. Okay? Talk again. I see Kathy. It's not important if you see me. Okay. So, so again, so we asked, uh, you don't know how long ketchup will keep in the fridge. So, yeah, I mean, I have to eat anything that's frozen, you know, up within a couple months. Um, but um, yeah, so the, we're pretty much toward the end here, but I just wanted to show you my immersion blender. This is a Cuisinart smart stick. And if you do get one of these, they're made specifically for creaming soups right in the pot. Uh, try to get one that comes apart. Some of them don't, it makes it easier to clean. And there's a little blade. And you just wanna make sure that you have this head below the surface of the soup so it doesn't fling everywhere. So my technique is just to go down a few times and then I kind of go around. So up and down.
go around. And this is pretty darn thick. And I think I said that at the beginning, if it's too thick, just add a little bit of water um, to thin it up. Better to have not enough water and you can add it than having too much. I like a few chunks, but mostly have it thick like a split pea soup. Okay, I think that's good. And then right away, take the top off and rinse it. Otherwise, it can dry up and be hard to wash later. All right. Last step, we're going to serve some. Ooh, that looks so good. Yeah, you could eat this plain. You could eat it over rice. You could put it over baked potatoes. It would freeze really well. You could put a little garnish on top of uh, some chopped tomatoes, black pepper, a fresh green herb, whatever you like. And there we go. I am compelled to clean this part that I blooped right here. All right, so there it is, a very hearty twist on split pea soup for you. And I think we're done. Well, you didn't even get rattled when the technology didn't work. How do you stay so calm, Kathy? I hum and I go, hmm, hmm, hmm. And that just helps me. And I've been doing this since May. And I'll tell you, there have been some issues. And I will freak out in my own little silent way. Um, so yeah, I, I'm learn I've learned a lot. This going live business is quite, quite a lot to know. There's quite a learning curve. If you want to do a good job and not just do it from your phone, you know, to get all this set up. And when I normally do my classes on Tuesday, I have two views. I have a camera going straight down into the cooking area too, but I don't know how to do that with Zoom. Um, but yeah, it's a lot to know. I feel very smart most of the time. And then other times like, ah, I don't know what to do. Brian says you have great energy. Oh, thank you. Let's thank you. See. Oh, Apple says humming is a great technique to stay calm. It tones the vagus nerve. Well, that's, I'm going to have to try that. Mm. Yeah. Well, you there's know, not, you know, the thing is, there's nothing we can do when it doesn't work. I mean, who are we going to yell at? You know, Zoom, <laughs> they we try to get customer service. You stand in line, you know, because everybody's on Zoom now, you know? Yeah, everybody's on Zoom. And I've learned that just because you have it set and dialed in one week, it could totally not work the next week. <laughs> And you don't know why, you know, there's so many different arms to it in the internet. And I, I got an ethernet cord, so I didn't have to rely on the Wi-Fi. And I'm just becoming this tech lady. I know it's pretty great. Stephanie says, which flavor is more pronounced in the soup? Is it the yellow split pea or is it the butternut squash? Well, let me taste it for you and see. It's very hot. Oh. I haven't had this in a while. It's very good. Mm. Well, the split peas are still kind of in there, like intact. So you can definitely taste those. I don't know. It's both. I don't think one shines over the other. If you want one to shine more, you can adjust the amounts of both of those. Um, if you want mostly butternut squash and then maybe just half as much of the peas, you could do that. If you have a question about how to do that, just email me, Kathy at straightupfood.com. Mm. Do people ever like, um, I don't know what the word I'm thinking of is, but like, do you ever get ragged on because you don't eat SOS? Like you're being too difficult, but you, you actually will make exceptions, I think. So exceptions for myself. Yeah. Oh. Like you're not, you're not as difficult. Like if, if right. You're not as you're not gold hammer SOS. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that to criticize. I mean, like, like it, I find that, you know, people just think I don't, I'm too difficult because of my diet, because I don't want to waver and eat oil, you know, like in a restaurant, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a little more 
if if it's not covered in oil, it's like like glistening and like oils at the bottom of your Thai dish or something. Um, if if it is like that, then I will not eat it. If the, if it, the oil's kind of hidden, I will eat it once in a while. Um, but it's tricky. Even when I ask for, I haven't gone out to eat in a long time. But when I did, I'd order like home fries, no oil or dry. And they're still cooked on the griddle that has the oil on it. And so you get a little bit of oil. So I might eat that. But you know, as, I, as I'm getting older and time goes by with eating this way, I am getting stricter with myself too. Because I just don't want to be an old person who has problems, like health problems. That's one of my motivations when I started out this um, way of eating. I had many motivations, uh, the animals, and I was just really interested in nutrition. But another thing was I didn't want to be older and I don't have children. So maybe I'll have to be a little bit more on the ball, um, take care, taking care of myself. But one of my grandparents lived in my town and my grandma, and she was always in a wheelchair from the time that I was born or time I can remember and she she just was not feeling good throughout her life her whole life since I knew her so maybe my potatoes are done so maybe that is why that got planted in my brain and maybe they even told me my grandparents like your health is your number one and my grandpa ended up passing away at age 60 something I believe quite early and so I don't know, I just, I like feeling good. I'm one of those people that will go the extra step uh, to learn about how to feel good. And that's what keeps me motivated, motivated with exercise too, because I just feel so much better when I do it. So everybody's different. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much for another great show. Did you want to show us the potatoes as they come out oh, of the oven? Sure. Let me get my other mitt. You turn that oven off. That is hot. Okay. I'll walk over here a little bit closer. Don't those look nice? Can you see those okay? Yeah, they look amazing. Yeah, so they're not even overly crisp. If you wanted to put them in for a little longer, five more minutes, uh, leave them in. You could do that. But yeah, these are great. I like these even better than French fries. I do have a recipe for French fries in my book too. Um, but these roasted potatoes with those spices on the outside, it's just so good. And then you dip it in the ketchup with a little bit of mustard um, or some hummus or some guacamole or whatever your thing is. Yeah, so delish. I'm so excited I get to eat when I sign off. I always say that. Yeah, well, but we won't we won't keep you any longer and hopefully we'll see your kitty cats next time. So thanks everybody for watching. Sorry about the little glitch in the middle, but please come back at 5 p.m. this evening when Kathy Mosquita is going to be doing a live yoga class. Thanks so much, Kathy. It was great to see you.